Hi everybody, it's Clark Camper with the October edition of Wall Street in Washington. Today I want to do a couple things that are different. One is we've returned back to the, to the New York Stock Exchange floor itself, but the second and much more important difference is that I wanted to take time to do a deeper dive on one particular topic, and that is the CFTC's implementation of the Dodd-Frank derivatives provisions. And who better to discuss this topic than our own Don Stump, who joins me here. Um, Don manages our derivatives and CFTC relationships in Washington and is a very experienced Washington hand to boot. Um, Don, what I'd like to do today is, is just, there, there are a lot of things we can talk about. I'd like to talk about three things very briefly. The first is what we can expect to see in terms of timing out of the CFTC's rulemaking process. The second is I'd like to hear some of your thoughts about harmonization of U.S. rulemaking with international rulemaking. And then the third is I'd like to get some of your thoughts about what uh, has been missed in the reporting around impacts on the regulated futures market from Dodd-Frank. So, so first, in terms of timing, um, the, the rulemaking uh, time frame has slipped already. Uh, what do you think we're going to see going forward? Well, I do think that the, it, it's no small, it's, it's not a secret that the rulemaking has slipped a bit. And I think that the regulators are struggling to sequence the rules in such a way that it makes sense. And involved in that is they have to establish some definitions, some key definitions of who is covered by these regulations and what products are covered within these regulations. Right. And that requires the CFTC and the SEC and all 10 of their commissioners to reach some agreement. And so that right now seems to be the missing link, although the chairman of the CFTC has recently said that they will be expecting to finalize those in the near term, at which point I think that things will begin to progress. Um, a bit more. Um, right. That said, the CFTC did just last week um, extend the deadline for those provisions that became effective, that would have become effective in July of 2011. Okay. They've extended that deadline until July of 2012. So we've already, you've already slipped a full year then right, on right. principle. Right, for some so. of the provisions. So, so do you think we hit that year? The, you know, I, the 2012 honestly, deadline? I, I, I don't. I think that they will work through the summer and finalize many of these regulations, at which mm -hmm. point these self-effectuating provisions will be able to take effect because the rules that would provide the clarity to the marketplace for those provisions to become effective will be in place right. at some point prior to July 2012. Right. right. Okay. Great. Well, shifting gears a little bit, talking about international harmonization, uh, back in 2009, the G20 adopted a sort of lofty goal of making sure that, that derivatives rules were harmonized across all G20 nations. Um, Europe is in the process of, of harmonizing or, or actually uh, developing their own regulations right now. What are your thoughts about how the U.S. and Europe and maybe the rest of the world may actually ultimately match up? I think that the regulators are making every effort to harmonize those rules to the point that they are workable around the, the globe. Mm -hmm. That said, the regulations that govern, or the laws that govern each of these individual jurisdictions are quite different, and the market structures have evolved around those right. particular existing statutes. And so to uh, imagine a world where the regulations are identical, I think is is, is not wise. It's unrealistic they, it's too, probably, unrealistic. right? Maybe unwise, also unrealistic. Right. Right. I think that they will differ. I think that they will um, make every attempt to have them harmonized where appropriate. Um, that said, there has been quite a lot of discussion in recent days about how far the regulation of the U.S. extends to affiliates in foreign jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. And I think the same can be said for Europe and their the, the entities that they regulate and their affiliates in the United States being regulated by European regulators. And so that has become the more controversial point. It's called extraterritoriality, okay. which is a mouthful, but they yes. certainly do anticipate that, that they will try to align them as much as possible, but that there will be differences and the marketplace will need to respond to those right. as they right. see fit. And the sequencing for, for that is also interesting. The U.S. is well ahead right. of Europe in, in finalizing their rules, and so it is also unrealistic to believe that these are all going to magically take effect on the same day, and so there will be lapses in the regulation around the globe. Okay, great. In, in closing, I wanted you to say a few words about, you made a very interesting comment to me about, you thought that, that there hadn't been enough focus on the impact of Dodd-Frank on the CFTC, CFTC's historic province of futures markets. Can you say a few words Certainly. about I, that? Certainly. I do think that the attention surrounding Dodd-Frank implementation has been focused on 
how the CFTC and the SEC are going to regulate this new swaps market, or, or a newly regulated market. Little attention has been paid to how these changes may impact the, the futures market, which has long been reg regulated by the CFTC. Right. And in particular, I think the market will be making adjustments due to the fact that the CFTC just finalized a rule limiting the number of futures positions and swaps positions, for that matter, that um, certain market participants can take. Additionally, foreign futures exchanges will be likely be subject to more oversight by the CFTC should they choose to do business in the United States, which will be a bit of a departure from the way they've done their um, mutual recognition in the past for comparably regulated foreign futures exchanges. And then more interestingly, I think, is this discussion that is occurring currently in regard to a proposal that is on the table whereby futures contracts would actually be delisted if they meet certain or don't meet certain parameters and then would become swaps um, wow. as an alternative to being futures. And the marketplace will have to learn to adjust to that. They're, they're, they're historically familiar with these futures contracts that may in fact become swaps contracts and, and that will be a very different con contract market. Yeah, right. One seems a little counterintuitive, also given the the thrust of Dodd Frank that you'd actually have some right, right, and, and some, well, swaps uh, and futures, on exchange. Absolutely, swaps products. and futures are are very similar. The standardized swaps are very similar to futures. Mm -hmm. They will just be regulated slight, slightly differently, and yeah. so the marketplace will um, have to respond to that. Yeah, right. Which, as we know, can have big impacts, big real world impacts. Right. Well, well, thanks very much, Don. This has been extremely informative, and thank you, viewers. We will see you next month here on Wall Street and. Washington.